Ah. Ah, a quiet bike. The ever elusive dream for some. So today, I wanna to share with you some simple hardware store hacks that you can try yourself. Now, I'm not talking about power tools. I've learned that lesson the hard way. But just a few simple things you can pick up from your local store to try quiet the beast down. Kazima put out a poll earlier this year asking the question, how important is a quiet bike to you? And that got me thinking, for some, it doesn't matter. And that's cool. But for many, like last year's World Cup winner Matt Walker, a quiet bike is really important. I've heard Matt say that a quiet bike saves him from any distraction while racing. And there was a few comments on the article that I was on board with, like this one. I want a bike that has no chain slap, normal hub sound, satisfying clicks of the shifter, and a nice top out thunk of the dropper post. Other than that, I'm listening to the sound of the dirt under my tires and the wind in my ears. How good. So what can we do to make our bike sound like that? Well, let's take a look at what I've picked up from the hardware store. The first place to start with, grease. Now I know for the mechanics out there that this isn't gonna be rocket science, but if you're like me, sometimes you need to be told things a couple of times before they stick. <laughs> see, see what I did there? I've picked up some standard petroleum-based grease out of the automotive section of the hardware store, and I'm gonna apply that to some key areas like the through axle, the bottom bracket, cranks, and any other area that moves under high load. When a bike comes new, the important parts of the frame usually come greased, but it never hurts to check. And don't forget to keep applying grease as you ride, because the grease can get washed out by water or dry up. How often depends on how much you ride and in what conditions you ride in. The first piece of the puzzle are the headset cups. These act as a joint between your frame and your headset bearings, which allow your front wheel to turn, and a perfect spot for some grease. So first big one, internal cable routing. Now I have to admit, I'm pretty lucky on this machine, I only have one cable growing rearwards, but I still wanna make it as silent as possible. So let's rip it out and show you an option. Hardware store electrical aisle, you'll find cable insulation. Now you can substitute this for electrical tape, but I find this works much better. You'll need to cut to length and figure out exactly where it needs to go for your specific frame. Now some frames have internal cable routing, easy to install the cable itself and not much space for the insulation. So if that's you and you're still getting a rattle, make sure you look at the entry and exit of the cable from the frame and maybe just put a bit of insulation there. Most videos make it look so easy, but cutting your internal brake hosing does take a little bit of admin. <laughs> like a full rebleed and all that good stuff. Refeeding through the frame, it's good for you. Good patience test. Another dangerously simple but crucial part of the bike that I was too scared to ask about was the bottom bracket. It essentially acts as a join between your frame and your cranks. The two bearings roll as you pedal the cranks. And it's often a source of noise if not installed properly. It'll either be threaded or pressed into the frame and something that you don't need to keep pulling in and out, but worth looking if you're still getting noise after a few rides on a new bike. Another source of cable noise is up in your cockpit. Now on the Enduro bike, I don't actually have any cables to rub together, but on the hardtail I do. So let's use that and show you a few examples of things we can try from the local store. First option is the classic zip tie. I mean, what can't these things do? They're not the prettiest, but just think about what's gonna happen to the cables when the fork goes under compression and tie them on. Too easy. Your second option is the electrical tape. Now it's not the strongest, so make sure you think about what's happening to the cables as the fork compresses, because it does rip pretty easily, which leads to the third option, which is the premium shrink wrap. Now, if you struggle to find it like I was in the hardware store yesterday, make sure you look at the automotive section. And again, it's easy to apply. Just need to cut it to length and take to it with your hairdryer at home. Your mechanic might not thank you because it's hard to take apart, but it looks great. Chain slap, it's probably the loudest noise on your bike. And you might have seen a few videos of bikes being bottomed out in slow motion. 
Now, that's not what's happening every time you ride your bike, but it gives you a good idea of what's happening to the chain and derailleur when your bike is under compression. There are tons of great silencing products out there, as well as lots of frames these days come with really good chain protection. But I wanna show you the few options you could try from the hardware store. So let's take this chain protector off from Commonsale and have a look. Now before you start, make sure your chain length is right and your derailleur clutch is working properly because the first option is the classic old tube. Cut up a length of old tube to fit your chain stay, wrap it around and secure with zip ties or electrical tape. To make it even better, all you need to do is wrap it in a spiral, be a bit more insulated and hold just that little bit better. Your second option is somewhere around the homeware section of the store, the stick-on Velcro. Now again, cut it to length for your chainstay, and you'll notice that the plastic provides a better sound insulation and lasts a little bit longer than the old tube. Your third option is mastic tape. Now, if you're like me and had never actually heard it called that before, it's essentially electrical tape, but halt. The tape's been rubberized and is really water resistant, so it's great for anywhere on your bike frame. Now, the basic way to lay it is to apply some isopropyl alcohol before you lay the tape in one straight line. But what we saw in the comments was the advanced option was to lay it in ridges every inch or so, and that provides better sound insulation as well as makes the tape more durable. How good. Before you take the bike out on trail, make sure you do a quick car park check to make sure you got rid of all the noise. You know, it doesn't need to be high tech. Just drop the bike from a few feet, bounce it on its rear wheel to get a feel for the headset and how that's sounding, as well as compress the suspension to help the cables move through the frame. Now I know that was just a handful of hardware store hacks, so make sure you let me know what I've missed in the comments below. And it's about time I took this bike for its first ride, so make sure you subscribe for its upcoming big mission soon.